Fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. I'm here with a buddy you know already, Carl Adrian, a great coach here in Estepona. We're at the beautiful club in Forest Hills. Club de Tennis Estepona, Club yes. de Tennis de Estepona, which uh, we enjoy the clay courts here today. And we have enjoyed some rackets. We'll take Carl's original racket away from My him. Original. Yeah, yeah, he plays with a, a Boom Pro Stock. Today we tried uh, new rackets from Diadem with a 100 Tour and the, the 100. Uh, the Tour is a bit like a pure drive Tour, so 350 grams of strong, pretty heavy racket. But the weight, as we talked about at lunch, is more in the handle, right? So the balancing is very much... About the, uh, 30, right? Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to worry so much about maybe the weight of 315. It's more if you like a headlight racket. Mm. Uh, the mass in the hoop are very similar. So the swing weight is around 315 to 320. And with strings uh, on both of these rackets and this is the Diadem Pro X string and this is a tour line combination uh, that I really liked. I'm testing a few different ones, Snapper uh, in the crosses and then it's um, Toro Toro in the mains. So first of all, uh, you try the tour first, what do you think of the Diadem rackets? It's the first time trying them, right? Uh, yes, so it's the first time trying them. Uh, I've heard quite a lot about them. There is quite a few players that have, uh, that have a contract with these rackets uh, down here on the Costa del Sol. And um, I, actually, I actually really liked it. It's a, it's a racket quite similar to what I used before my current racket. I used to use the Donai Penta. This is yep. definitely a bit stiffer. Yep. Diadem, a small-ish brand, but I'm hearing more of it um, lately. Uh, it feels like quite a heavy racket. Yeah, so this is the tour version, but it's quite headlight. It says 12 points. Let's give it a go. I like the paint job. I like the, the material. It's like matte. It feels like touching paper. I really liked it. It had a lot of power though. Uh, for my liking, I like it with a little bit less power. Uh, but again, if I'm sure even if you're intermediate, even to advanced, you could really get a lot out of this racket. It gives a lot of spin. You could immediately see that the shape of the ball was going much higher. Immediately, I feel that I get much more lift on the ball. Probably because it's 1619. Yeah, correct. It's 1619. I like, I like putting heaviness on the ball and this, this racket can, can give that. Uh, before using this one I was trying to clash and that was like much straighter like not adjusting anything with my swing uh, or my technique uh, but just kind of yeah the same shots and the uh, outcome was totally different uh, this one going much higher over the net and the previous record the clash record was going much straighter uh, but yeah a lot of power the balls can kind of go everywhere so you need to have a lot of self-control to mm -hmm. be able to use this racket uh, I'd say a little bit less precise uh, than than my one, my boom, uh, but it is a racket that, that I could play with. Yeah, sure. and I, what's good with these, I really like this. I need more power than him, so we're two different play styles. He's a better player. Uh, I'm a guy who needs a little bit of help from the racket. Uh, I don't want too much help though, but, but so this is strong, pretty high, so it's like 24 kilos, 53 pounds. Uh, and, and I like that a lot. Uh, and I, you, you need to make sure you hit with some spin because otherwise, you know, the ball yeah. will go a little bit. And sometimes on volleys, for example, you felt like uh, you need to put extra little bit of, of, of uh, rotation on the ball. Otherwise, it's going to sail out. But that's the case with all the pure drives and power rackets, the yeah, Ionix yeah. E-Zones and so on. Uh, but this is a racket. It's a in that category, isn't it? Is, it? Exactly. Yeah, this racket. If you don't create, if you don't have that wrist lag, the, the balls might fly long. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. Gotta, be, gotta be able to create that spin for the ball to dip. Cause, yeah. yeah, you need to really get under the ball, otherwise uh, mm. the ball can go a bit. But it, when you play well and you contact the ball well, the, the racket uh, gives you some extra power, extra spin. I think the dampening is very good. I didn't feel any yeah. issues with the arm, and though it's a pretty high tension. Mm. Uh, it has a uh, Craybon hybrid core, and I think it's filled with some kind of foam. So uh, the, the, the sensation is not bad on the arm, like it can be sometimes with stiffer rackets. And I do want to mention something I did like about it, is the sound that the ball makes. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like a pingy sound. I personally do like that. I know mm. others don't. Um, I don't use dampener. Uh, so kind of all rackets has like a pingy sound to it, but this one had uh, like a good amount. It wasn't yep. too much and it wasn't like totally uh, compact. Dead, yeah. So uh, I like, you get a lot of feedback, don't mm -hmm. you? Those, yeah, that pingy sound, by the way, it, it, it's vibrations and with those vibrations, you get you get feedback into your, into your body, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and you have choices here. So there are four different rackets uh, that I've been testing. We brought two here today, uh, but there's also the team and the light. And really the only difference in this is like they're all the same mold. So the same structure of racket, the same layup. It's only weight balance and swing weight that differs. And swing weights are a bit more similar because when you get a lighter racket, you need a bit more mass in the head. Otherwise you have like a completely dead racket and there's no, no weight behind the ball. Uh, so it's based on your, your playing style, on your playing level, how light of a racket you like. I prefer the 
Tour over the 300, uh, but the 300 customized a little bit plays very similar to the Tour, pretty much the same racket. So uh, in this case, I could make these identical because they are technically, except for the weight and balance, pretty identical. Yeah. Um, string setup, you, you did like the Tour line, you said, no? I did like the Tour line. I really like the Tour line. Uh, I would reconsider the color uh, election. <laughs> that, that's my, my uh, job there. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, uh, you don't play tennis for the color of the strings. Uh, it, it's the feel that counts, and I really like the tour line. I'd never tried them before. Jonas had uh, told me about it uh, many times previously during dinners and lunches and, and other times that we've played. But I never had actually tried it until uh, today, and I really liked it. Um, in fact, um, I asked you if, if I can uh, try a set on my own racket. Yep. So I'm gonna, we'll make that happen. When that happens, we'll give another feedback. And I actually really like the, I mean, I like Torline as you know, but I, I do really think that the Diadem strings are good. I've tried strings in the past from them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how they got famous in the first place. But the Pro X, uh, which is six sided, so hexagonal and gives a good bite to the ball. I've been in the racket for a bit, but now still can produce that, that bite. So if you feel like you need help with the control of the racket, I think like having a, a shaped string is usually what you go for as well, right? Yeah. So uh, a little bit of a shaped string. Yeah. So um, thumbs up, I think for Diadem, I think they keep producing nice rackets. I can understand why players are shifting to them and they're getting some buzz in the racket industry because it's tough to make a new racket brand and, and sell rackets these days. But but for me, it was, it was really positive. I, I could easily switch and play with this in tournaments because you get help on the serve, get some top spin. You realize that you're playing a bit better when you get extra help from the rackets. I think these ones are high on the list. For Absolutely. And I do want to give a comment on the cosmetic. It's actually a, it's actually a beautiful racket. Black, uh, light blue uh, details. And also the the, the feel, the, the material is like matte. It's uh, kind of like velvety, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, I really like this. Uh, um, yeah, I like the cosmetic. So good job. Yeah. Good job, Diadem, for that. All right. That's it for this one. Have a nice day and... Don't forget to play some tennis. All right, here's some bonus content, even though I said uh, that you should not forget to play some tennis, which I hope you're not. Uh, here I'm hitting with, with James, who also tried the racket. Uh, we have Andre as well, who has tried the Novas. Uh, I play with these a lot. I really like the rackets, especially the Tour. Uh, that's my preferred frame. I uh, could easily play with this in a tournament. Uh, I'm kind of switching in between that and the Steam 100 Pro Stocks that I have at the moment. More about my racket madness on Patreon and for YouTube members, but uh, James liked the frame as well. He thought he wouldn't like it uh, He plays with like an RDIS uh, Yonex 98 uh, Fan of old-school rackets also used like a V core pro 97 uh, heavy one uh, and uh, This one was not really what he usually gravitates towards, but he played well with it and he liked it He thought it, it Gave easy power, good spin, uh, all the things that usually power rackets do, but it was not like uncontrollable. Uh, if he found like he could he could hit his targets, and he got something for free, uh, he did not expect as much from the rackets. And I think this is what a lot of people experience when they try power rackets from the first time. And the reason I'm trying to switch over to these types of frames after a whole tennis life of, of playing with Prestigious and, and Wilson 6195s and all these uh, classic uh, legendary 1820, 95 or 98 square inch rackets that are quite demanding, whether it's a blade or a Prestige. I mean, they're both pretty demanding blade, a little bit less so. Uh, so I've been trying, although it, it's going to take time to, to really get used to all the power and the spin. You have to adjust your strokes a bit, but uh, this one is high on the list for me of frames I would like to um, to commit to. Uh, if I can commit to anything, I don't know. Uh, that's uh, that's another story, but it's definitely high on the list of, of rackets that I play well with and I, that I enjoy hitting with. And uh, James liked it, uh, as did Andre, which we will see here very soon, uh, who's a very good player, plays with a heavily customized Gravity MP and video to come about that, but uh, they all liked it. I think I liked it the most. Uh, I was probably the most positive about this frame, and uh, that's probably because I'm the weakest player of all of all of us here who's been hitting here. I think for um, for players who, who need a bit of extra help, I think these frames make a lot of sense. Uh, but I know a lot of advanced players that play with pure drives as well, and there's several on the ATP tour that play with, with pure drives and similar rackets like this one. So. And nothing wrong with playing with a power racket, it's just about getting used to it. Some can't, uh, some can, but um, good serve, good uh, power on ground strokes, extra top spin. Uh, did not 100% enjoy it as much uh, when it comes to drop shots and volleys. That was really where I struggled. That's where these uh, control rackets and field rackets, uh, PT57A, 
precious blades, whatever, come in play a bit more. But if it's not your bread and butter to hit a lot of drop shots and volleys, then maybe you can get used to this, or you can check out the Elevate if you want to try the excellent Dylan rackets. I really like their rackets. They're, they're very good, especially for a new young company. There are several new fresh companies, smaller companies that make good rackets, and the Diadem is one that, that really does a good job with the marketing as well and getting some players and so on. That's a tough part when you're new on the tennis scene. But uh, overall, very good. We all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the most, but even the advanced players here I enjoy the feel and the performance of the racket, although it's not a switcheroo for them, while it might be for me. So I hope you enjoy those those added thoughts, and I will keep playing with it. And if you want to follow my racket journey, my tournament play and stuff like that, I post all that stuff on my members and Patreon. Uh, I think that is a better channel for that stuff. All right, have a nice day now, and don't forget to play some tennis.